regards into writing seriously, years later in the U.S., I was able to marry that part of my culture with, with writing. Was it oral storytelling or...? It was oral uh, storytelling. I remember we didn't have a TV growing up and every night when we were in the village, my grandmother told us a story. Um, my father was also a great storyteller. And at the time I was growing up, women generally stayed at home. So we were exposed to their gossips and various, you know, stories and storytelling. Did it feel monotonous to you, especially the bits about the guava? All the time we are just, it's about a guava. This, these kids will run somewhere then, oh guava. Or they'll run somewhere defecate. Or run somewhere, people running after them. And, and I'm like, if, okay, can we just stop? I get the They picture. have no home life. These are children who have But no these are kids. Life. What are they going to yeah, talk about? Yeah, but don't give it to me ten times. No, I mean, this part one does not have to be elongated and it's the same thing. But Whoever. actually, that was the best part. That's the thing people don't understand. It. Yeah. The first 100 pages was the, was the main... Yeah, that's true. ...was the that's main true. novel. She lost the, me <laughs> when we went to the... In fact, for me, yeah. I like the first part of the book. I like the chasing after the guava trees mm. and going to homes that didn't even and have like people in them that mm. belong to foreigners. I like that first part because I feel like the author was more engaged then. Yeah. But then for me, the second part of the book, when she goes to America, she just becomes blah. Like it's almost like the same. For me, it's almost like she's a bit more disconnected. So the funny interesting part thing about that is actually what happens to immigrants. When you go to another society, you actually start, those things start happening you to you. You have to adapt, yeah. You start becoming more disconnected. Um, and that, that's the thing we are not so understanding. So you felt what she felt. So she she, felt she's like actually disconnected. No, 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 she's more introverted. <laughs> that's it. She, I did not. Exactly. She's for, actually. For the first time, I did not even relate to the book at all. Yeah. Ever. But I felt like I understood. Like for example, like you see, they're running to the guava trees, and for me, I think she did justice yes. to the stories of mm. those kids and trying to explain her childhood. Yeah. To that part, she really did justice, yeah. and you almost go to run to those guava trees and you're like what and you have these people are yeah. and rough mm. but for some reason they found joy in it all yeah and that was i guess that was their reality but that was too it was too long for me I'm uh, like, no but that was the, that was on. the Let's novel for america some really. a lot of them <laughs> huh? no because america you'll, and that's the thing i love about the book because when you go to america with your mindset that it's, it's going to be a very good amazing place it disappoints and it always disappoints. Yes, yeah, that's yeah. true. And that's something she really portrays so very there's, well. There's that sense but of do you know, you'll always Janet, go I didn't and know when she got to America. Like I had to turn back and like, wait, when did she go to America? Because I got somewhere and I'm like, oh, uh, she, yeah, uh, she made it. She made it. She made it. Yeah, like, yeah. It. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> when did you ask me? <laughs> she made it. How? She she me, to like, for me, the transition between Africa and America yeah, was very clear. Like, yeah. it, was like, it was almost like part two. <laughs> I mean, I have, to, I have to mention, this is something I have to mention, that uh, the part of the reason why the, the book is so interesting for me is because the first part of the novel was a short story. Um, I think it was Finding Istanbul. Uh, oh, um, Budapest. Finding Depeche, Budapest. Yeah. Mm which won the Kane Prize in 2011. Oh, I see. So she made it into a novel. Then she just made it into a novel. Now that's oh, another con that would explain. You see, that would okay, explain. so that makes sense. Because the first bit of the book feels complete. Mm -hmm. And then it's almost like she added... Some the more. second part feels like an addition. So yeah. it was a short story. Yeah, it was initially a short story. The 100 pages were a short story. No, no, like, written no, by her. Well, the first, yeah, it was initially... Yeah, the first, initially, first, part, the yeah, first, the first part, part was a short sentence. story. A complete yes. book in a short story. Um, yeah, by so her, yes, by her. Yes. yes, and then now she fleshed it out into she a fleshed novel. It out into so a then novel. this wasn't her first book? Uh, no, a short story is not a book, it's a short story. Hey, <laughs> today! Teachers, <laughs> teachers, we are your students. Uh, no, 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 a short so. story is like a sh smaller, and then, um, and then it's like a, up to 10,000 words is where you get a short story. Then from there to, to 35,000 words it becomes novella, then above 35,000 it becomes novel. So it was a short story, and then it became a novel. I, I think that the, the change of tone in that second part of the novel is appropriate for someone who's moved into a different place yeah. that she's not excited about, you know. It's, it's a story of displacement. She feels displaced. But it's a, it's a theme of displacement that runs throughout the novel. So if you're looking for a thread, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. That thread is displacement. It looks different in the second part of the novel because the protagonist is different. By now she's older. She's articulating her thoughts differently. Um, she's super hilarious. Yeah, she's <laughs> but she funny. has a very active inner life. If you notice, she's saying very little. 
it's, it's her thoughts it's that we're seeing. Yes, 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 she's yes. very active in her life. To reflect the fact that she doesn't want to say what she's thinking because she doesn't want to be judged. You know, she's negotiating she speak school. Well. Yes. The kids don't understand her. Yes. Even yeah. her auntie Faustina is still struggling with being an immigrant in America, yeah. having to adopt, to speak weird ways, yeah. to, to be understood She's on the phone. She's trying to look like the women on the TV. It's yeah. very difficult. It's about the immigrant experience yes. and the identities that one is forced to assume in order to navigate a new place. So I think it's appropriate that the, the tone should change and that it's not as, as happy-go-lucky as the first part of the story was. You know, she's now having to find a new identity. So she's, you know, who is she? You know, when you're 13, 14, you're already, no matter where you're from, it's a difficult time. Even mm -hmm. if you don't move, you're like, who am I? You're, you're trying to mm -hmm. find a new identity. So if you add on top of that an immigrant layer, can you, you, can, you can see how complicated that is. For, for a child. And yet it's very poetic. I think that second part of the novel is extremely poetic. I loved the yeah. prose of that second part of the novel. Very early on and in that in that second I'll not fall asleep <laughs> I'll no, be no, there I mean, waiting like, to listen uh, to you. You love the prose. Uh, no 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 like, listen, her social yes. commentary is off the chain. I mean there there are very few people who can do the social the commentary. The poetry of it is fantastic. That she's I just done thought in that she, book. She took way longer than she needed to to get to the point. No, but the journey is part less of the point. about a narrative Does and that make more sense about... The, the journey is part of the whole point. Like, you know, the journey is part of the experience. Because but that journey was just too long. <laughs> no, it's, you, you have feel, to enjoy the journey. It's you part of like the... Do you feel like now that you met her, you're a bit biased? Maybe. In terms of, like, no. how you, you no, view the book? No, I don't and think like so. So I actually met her after I'd read the book. Yeah, I'm not even okay. And yeah. you still felt the same way about the book even before. Yes, you met I, her. I met her after I read the book because uh, she she came here in uh, 2000 and 2015. Mm -hmm. I hadn't met her, so when I read the book, I said, okay, this book is a wonderful book. There is no book without flaws. It it does have a few flaws. They they don't exist. Eh? Even the books that we most love, they all have flaws. I mean, they're not 100 percent. I said, okay, there's some things, but I really love the book. I love the I love the social commentary. I love the prose. I love the humor. I mean, and then it's a story which I can relate to because I was also once an immigrant who went to another part of the world. And I saw oh, the tell things. Tell us about your experience. <laughs> Is it the truth? No, I mean, I wasn't in the U.S., so I, it wasn't as bad as. Okay. <laughs> because okay. the people who go to the U.S. get it really bad. Yeah. So I, I, was in, I was in the U.K. Okay. And I was, I was recognizing some of the things that I was seeing in the mm. book. Like, oh, this is what people. Oh, yeah, I remember this. I remember this. Mm. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe she didn't explain it as well to some other, some readers, mm. but uh, for those of us who've done, who've been through those experiences, we recognize this. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh. I kind of felt that she instilled or used some of like, um, how do I put it, like Zim slang. Which, by the way, for the record, I love. It was there, right? Yes. Yeah, there was a lot the of the. And it's the same thing I hated in Chimamanda. It had this whole Niger. No, stay with me. This yeah. whole Niger thing. Oh, those my old things. After say, oh, I, I, I like that. I like that. <laughs> I think it's only Kenyans who, who we don't have one. That. Yeah. Me, you know, I, I have. Hey. Good <laughs> save. Good save. <laughs> good save. <laughs> but we don't have our own. Slang. But I just we feel do. like we for do. me, um, we do. We do. African, okay, what I've always appreciated about authors outside of Kenya, um, and that's just a personal uh, preference for me, James, please. <laughs> <laughs> I say this as I approach with caution. But what I've appreciated about African authors is they stay true to who they, like their home. It's almost like they're writing the story for their home country, and then the other wider African audience is you guys can come in and you can relate to whatever you want to relate to but this is for my people mm -hmm. and I feel that with the Nigerians I feel that now with uh, I felt that heavily with her book yeah um, and that for me was and I like of, for me I like that because totally. I just feel like it's their culture however our our authors here try too much to my feeling try too much to include the wider audience yeah that we never straight stay true to our our culture. The only person who has seen like Ngugi is the one who is just apologetically like uh, Kenyan. Mm. But all the rest of us, we want to maintain our English. We never. How many books do you see with Sheng inside? Like a whole paragraph of Sheng where another person would just go like, okay, so what? And I don't see what is the problem with that you because know. I have read another book. Um, I'm sorry, I forget. But several other books that have you know entire passages. 
in other languages yeah. and that adds to the authenticity of well, it and exactly, I don't even think exactly. that they need to be translated yeah. I am very much yeah. against the wholesale translation of things I think that you so should just so leave it as what you don't like is actually something I really appreciate about why did you find I'm that a tone off? no I, yeah. I'm, I'm reading a book from, from a Zimbabwean character I'm, I need to hear what they need to sound Zimbabwean. I agree. It's not authentic so otherwise. Either, I can't either, take it seriously. Either that or the people in Zimbabwe so will just feel like it's So is this book marketed internationally or just in Zim or Africa? I think even if it is. I think unfortunately books that are marketed for the American market tend to have a lot more explanation. This yeah. means this, this means that. Yeah. So the idea is that you're reading, um, I mean like um, Jennifer wrote this beautiful book. There are things which you actually just understand that you're reading. You're reading somebody's life experience. Right. So you're, you're not trying to read like what I as a Kenyan would experience if I was there. Yeah. Or maybe somebody, like it's the experience of somebody who lives somewhere. And it needs to be genuine, yeah. authentic. Yeah. And so when somebody is using the language, that language within that, I, I'm actually enjoying, I'm like, yeah, this is Zimbabwe. Yeah, this I is tell Zimbabwe. you who does that really well. There's a writer called Panache Chigumanze, if I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Panache, I'm completely damaging her name. Yeah. But she, she, she does that very well, weaving English and Shona into the narrative. And of you don't need your translator, you luckily don't. With no need for translation. You so, you know, um, idioms in Shona, sayings in Shona. Do you think it's deliberate? Because I know yes. if they. Oh, it is? Yes. Ah. But I wish Kenyans. Some things don't translate yeah. into English. I wish Kenyans would adopt more of that. And I feel like if we did that, our books would be more like embraced better exactly. in, the, in the African in the African audience because yeah. I feel like people recognize when you embrace yourself and when you embrace yourself as opposed to trying to be everyone else or trying to fit into what everyone else needs to think of you then you, you don't come out as original which exactly. is the same way that that goes to our movies our music That's right. you know our books we do a better we, job of it in our movies yeah because because yeah yeah because we don't stay yeah. true so, to so there's a couple of kenyan writers who've actually done that okay uh, one is called peter kimani Who's, ball, who's got a book yeah. called Dance of the Jacaranda? <laughs> I haven't read that book yet. I feel so behind. Yeah, that one you can, you can feel. Okay. You can feel. And then there's Yvonne at the Amber Award. Yes, yeah, that's Whose right. book came out uh, in 2013, Dust. Yes. And then the other one came out in all, two or three weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, the Dragonfly Sea. Right. She does use. But the thing is, it's not a lot, lot of them. Most yeah, of them. It's very few. It's, it's actually, I'm telling you the ones who do it. The because thing is, value in that. Yeah. There's plenty of value in that. that that's, yeah. that's what. Because uh, I just want to read a book in English and I'm okay and I'm happy. Like I, I, I don't need to know what your culture, <laughs> what your slang is. Really? I just, just give but me English. Then you might as well read uh, John Grisham. Yeah. No. Plenty of that. Yeah. Well, it is there, and I read that, and it's simple. I grasp. But now, by the time you have, like what you said in her part one, a million characters, which you're really attached to, and then before you know it, okay, that character is not there. We, but isn't that what happens in games of Game of Thrones? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Where the good characters even die. And, and, and but also, how, <laughs> and I'm happy, and I'm happy I get to challenge you openly about this. Because uh -huh. I feel like it's a very colonized way of thinking. Which, what, which thinking? The, a colonized, the thinking that uh -huh. if, if we embrace our language and if it's not, as, it's not in proper English and, you know, and it's not perfect from beginning to end. I feel like it's colonization of the mind. But it'll take me because longer to consume. Okay, I read the book. Already are tough enough to follow. But, but then okay, the names, Zimbabwe just the names. names are not easy. Yeah. Yes, sir. We have to accept they're no. not easy. They're not. So by the time I'm done with God knows, then I come to Chibo. Then I come to Chibo. 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 Bastard. Bastard. Then Bastard. So I have to and then, like, then there's a, Then there's, the past, there's this pasta there. Oh, yeah, the pasta. The pasta. <laughs> Isn't it? Who speaks in tongues? And then first, the first setting is in Budapest. So I'm like, whoa. So it's not even. I thought Bill had told me this book is written by no, Zimbabwe. It is, it's so oh, no, no, you also have to be like, too literal. In Zimbabwe, right? You can't no, no, come to fiction there. too literal. Budapest is a slam in Zimbabwe. It's, it's in Zimbabwe. <laughs> it's such a neighbor. No, it's, like, it's like the way we make this in Soweto. Like, yeah. No, no, no. no it's actually like an upmarket neighborhood, Budapest. Uh, Their neighborhood, the, the slum yeah. was called Paradise. Okay, yeah, 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 that was an irony. So, yeah. what, what is Budapest here? Is it a, it's so, you know, the it's an upmarket neighborhood. Yeah, Lavington. Yeah. It's Lavington. Like a for real. Yeah. 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 So, now I am thinking, wow, the setting is in Europe. 
Wow. And then I'll come and see where the dad comes and he says, listen, my boy. I'm like, oh my God, I've been reading about a boy all this time. Oh my gosh. You know? I think Catherine, you cannot come to a novel too literally. It's a work of fiction. <laughs> it's a work of fiction. <laughs> it's a work of fiction. been a boy all this time? And then now when, you know, in, his head, in her head she says, yeah, I won't respond because I know I'm not a boy. I'm like, oh, <laughs> at least it's, I've been okay this far, you know, but yeah. So the, the thing is, uh, I, I want to suggest that most people um, who are starting to read African literature, the initial like few books will be a bit confusing. Uh, it's like when we started watching Nollywood in this country, a lot of people used to say that's nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> what is because this? the culture was so different. No, because right? we, were, we didn't understand right. it. Right. We but now, really uh, but now we are into it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so the thing yeah, is, you have to get used to it. Right. You have to get used to it. Yeah. Right? So yeah. it's, it's a journey, which I assure you, like, uh, because you've been on it for a while. Right. After a while, you'll notice that it's normal for yeah. you to just uh, sit down and you're like, yeah, this is more close to what I'm used yeah. to. Yeah. Because, for instance, uh, it's paradise. Um, one day, maybe you guys will do a story where you go to, uh, to court or somewhere. Then you'll see it and be like, yeah, it reminds me when, when I was in court, when I was in Soweto. Yeah. So the thing is, it's because sometimes uh, when we read out the literature some of us are exposed to, is uh, it's very American Eurocentric, yeah, and uh, we we see literature as something you know as a, you know watching a Hollywood movie. Yeah, very very satisfying. Yeah, but the reality is literature can do more things. <laughs> right. So when we what what what's happening to you is what literature can do because you actually it's bamboozling you. You're like, what is this that I'm doing? Like, but <laughs> as you're reading it, you realize you're enjoying yourself. Yeah, it's Chinua Chebe like that. Yeah, those are the guys who started. They're the original OGs. OGs. <laughs> the one we did, the one we did in high school. What yes, yes, yeah, things, things fall apart. Did you things fall apart. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, 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 it has that nature yeah. slant. I mean, yeah. now it's, 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 I mean, no, back it's so much. But there were a lot of evil proverbs. Yeah, there were a lot of proverbs. You know, there were a lot of But, like, but the proverbs were explained. A long time ago. Yeah, because of the time. The proverbs were explained because of, yeah. Because of the time. Yeah, they were explained. It was so new. All the proverbs were explained. But even when they were explained, it didn't make total sense because when it is translated it used to lose its Of course it is. Uh, uh, you say in a potato yeah. 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 <laughs> This is Tell exactly you. why um, Trevor Noah's novel, I'm sorry to introduce any novel it's into okay. the discussion. It's okay, introduce it, I love it. For me a little <laughs> bit loses some of its authenticity because there's so much explanation of everything, you yeah. know. Yeah, yeah. But it was goes into three to explain what yeah. funny worms are, goes into many, you know, it's just it's just too much explanation. Just, I think just say, we ate the Mopani worms for dinner yeah. and then yeah. you will understand If you need to find out, you go, you'll Google if you need to find exactly. out. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. writer could do some of that Because you see now, well. and, that's, and that's the reason, like for me, I deliberately wind off like American authors, uh, um, it, like unless like it's like a really, somebody who's known or it's, it's an inspirational book. But I stopped reading American fiction uh. because I felt that we were so accepting of their culture and their way of living because they would almost impose their way of living, their culture, and we were so ready to accept it because we think, in our minds, we imagine it's superior. Mm. So my work is to under, because so many times, if I think of all the books that I read, um, the Mills and Boons mm. and uh, Daniel That's why you're in a beautiful relationship because you know. started <laughs> mm. But you see, the thing is, you see, it wasn't realistic, and in some ways, I found it hard to understand because I couldn't relate with the streets and the food and the everything. It just since it's what you see on TV and you've been told that this is a better life, you're more accepting of it, but you don't relate to it in any way. And but then again, I, why should we write for them? They should try and understand us because all of a sudden they have this interest in African There's a word for literature. You. What is that? Give, me, right, give me the word for her. She's what? Afro. Afro? Afro file? Yeah. There's, there's a word for her. Afro, a, Afro, Afro file? Afro file. What is that? I, know, I think I know what you're looking for. Like all African things. Yeah? I've been Africanized. You be, no, there's a word. There's a word for you. Like anything from the West. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I, know, I, know, I know I belong to the newer millennial generation who's like, well, you know what, um, it's time for Africa. We also have something to offer. You know, us. and it's time for... Okay, final thoughts on the book as we wind yeah. up. So is it a yes or a no? <laughs> after you've been enlightened, <laughs> after they have educated you, <laughs> that this book is not all over the place, yeah. should people go out and get it? 
Yes. Okay. Yes, because again, I'm for African literature. However, yeah. I feel like if she did a rewrite with more insight <laughs> and a better understanding of the uh, African culture and just like she with has the newer an eyes, of her culture. I think so. if she rewrote the book oh, with newer cool. eyes, I think it would be better. How much newer can I feel like, eyes be? I feel you like already the, complain about that in it. <laughs> the, the book is was still in its very raw stage, and while I appreciate the gems in the book, the flaws are massive so go in with the okay so yes go in get the book because it's an african book and we all need to support african authors but then go in with a very open mind and with um a forgiving heart and a lot of openness <laughs> so a hard. lot of openness for so the hard, so hard. thank you <laughs> Bill, and you jane no i definitely buy the book okay um it's a it's a wonderful story this is a young person they go through so much and they are living in their home country of Zimbabwe and then when they go to the US because they were told that that's the promised land they find that it's not the not promised so land promised. that we think and I always encourage people to read these kind of stories because they, they, they are the, the truth that nobody wants to tell us so I always say please read that book um, I, I, always, I also say like try not give the author too, many, too much pressure this woman just wrote a story <laughs> which she enjoyed and a lot of people enjoyed if you, if you look at it that way, like you're reading a story, you're not trying to see that somebody's trying to do so, so many things. It's a beautiful book. Okay. Miss Janet. Hmm. <laughs> I would say yes, get this book for the experience. Um, do you know how we experienced our seminal moments in 2007, 2008? That was um, a big historical turning point for our country. This was a big historical turning point for Zimbabwe. And there are several works that have emerged since then documenting that time. So that's one reason to get the book. Secondly, um, and so maybe that's why it's also a bit complicated because not only were there sort of existing slum dwellers, but then there were people who were considered themselves middle class who suddenly were, found themselves in the slum. So there was that layer of, um, so that came out also in the first book. So that experience, in a note, just, just, just for that experience alone, read the book. Also, the use of prose in this novel is so fantastic that I really, I really recommend it. Just get it to just read this beautiful poetry. Okay, I've had words like beautiful from you, beautiful, wonderful from you, James. Bilha says, let's support our own. Viva. <laughs> That's the only thing you didn't say. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing you didn't say. Viva, support our own. And if you so have it's time... it's not flawless. It's not flawless. It's not flawless. It's the no. first work, it's not no, flawless. It's not. Yeah. But it's still a good work. Yeah. And, um, you know, we all have to start from somewhere. We have to start from somewhere. If and you put it And this is a like good that, start. As far as starts go, this is a, a good great, one. It's a great start. Yeah. Good, great. We need to find out because they'll keep coming up with more words to mm. describe this book. Mm. <laughs> but thank you for coming. Thanks we appreciate for your insights. Thank you for educating me. At least I owned up before Bill had did. So that you know I was wrong and I didn't see some things as I needed to. And I guess that's how you do such shows to get to know. Yes, to learn. So find this book if you especially enjoy like slang, cultural slang from different places. Those of you have a taste for it. If you don't, you can al always acquire it. Yeah. Acquired taste, I guess. That's what it is for me. So until the next African book review, God help us. Have a nice week. <laughs>